Okay, in this video we are going to do a problem that involves finding a relationship between A and B that makes something true. So to do that we have to know a couple of things. The first thing is what does it mean to find a relationship between A and B? So um, what that means is that we want to write A in terms of B um, or you might say or it might be more convenient to write B in terms of A. Whichever one's more convenient is what we're going to end up doing. So for example, that might look something like um, A is equal to two thirds of B. So for some reason when A is two thirds of B, the problem works out, or maybe it looks like A is equal to B minus 19, right? So in both cases, A is written in terms of B. If you know what B is, it'll tell you what A is. Um, so uh, in the first one, uh, A equals two thirds B. If B was equal to six, um, we would just substitute six in, six divided by three is two, two times two is four, so A would be four. Um, okay, so that's the general idea. There's a, an infinite number of examples we could look at, uh, but let's do an actual problem. So the problem looks like this. Assuming A and B are non-zero, find a relationship between A and B such that A squared, B squared, the quantity X minus three, plus two A cubed, times b times the quantity x minus three equals zero. So that's a problem that we wanna solve. So to do this, the first step that I'm gonna go through is uh, I'm actually gonna factor out the greatest common factor because I see a lot of common things. So first I'm gonna focus in on um, the things that have a in them. So there's a squared and there's a cubed. And so I can actually factor in a squared out of both of those. So I'll get a squared. Now I'm gonna look at the things that have b in them. So there's b squared and b. So the greatest common factor of b squared and b is just b. So I'm gonna factor b out of both of those. And then I see this quantity x minus three, it shows up there, it shows up there. Uh, I'm just gonna factor x minus three out of both terms that I'm looking at, so x minus three. Now what I need to do is worry about what's left over. So I'm gonna open a parenthesis and I'm gonna go back to the first term, that a squared, b squared, quantity x minus three. So I factored a squared out, so that's gone. I factored a b out of b squared, but that leaves me with one b in this term, so there's b. I factored the quantity x minus three out, so that's gone, or it leaves a one technically, like multiplying by one. Um, moving on to the next term, the plus two just stays there because I couldn't take anything out. Um, I took an a squared out of a cubed, which leaves me with one a, so there's a factor of a left over. And then I factored x minus three out, so that leaves me with a factor of one, but we don't write that, so we get that. That's all the factoring we could do. And then I want this thing to equal zero. Okay, so now what I need to do is look at what I'm dealing with and figure out how to do the problem. So remember, we're looking for non-zero values of a and b, and we want a relationship between a and b such that this thing equals zero. So what I'm gonna use now is the fact that if a product equals zero, then at least one of its factors must be zero. That's the only way you're gonna get zero. Um, so let's look at each factor individually. So from a squared, the only way that's gonna equal zero is if a equals zero. Um, from b, the only way that'll equal zero is if b is zero. Um, but remember, from the original problem, a and b are non-zero, so neither of those actually works in this case. I'm gonna look at the x minus three. So I need x minus three to equal zero. And most of you probably just looked at that and said, well, x is equal to three. So if x is equal to three, then this whole product will be zero. But again, we're looking for a relationship between a and b. So we move on to this last factor. So I need b plus two a to equal zero. Um, and in this case, I'm gonna solve uh, for b because that's the easiest thing to do. So I'm gonna subtract two a from both sides, get b is equal to negative two a. That's a relationship between a and b such that this whole product is equal to zero. So if A is equal to one, then B would be equal to negative two. If A was equal to 10, B would equal negative 20. Um, it gives me this nice relationship, and if I plug it in, I'll always get zero. So that is my solution. So this is a relationship between A and B such that that given thing will equal zero. Um, and that's it. So I hope you found this helpful, and good luck.